Welcome back to the Arrow Panel, a dance game discussion show where we talk about dance games like Dance Dance Revolution, mostly, and sometimes we mention other ones like Pump It Up and In The Groove. It's episode number 45. 45? And we're not talking about Taco Bell because we got a special guest today. We got Akira Complex, the Bimani artist, joining us for an interview later on. But right now, we're going to talk about some news. There's a lot of news coming out, coming out with DDR lately. There's been a lot of developments in the Ace 2 game, so uh, let's uh, let's get into that. Yeah, I mean, I think the big news is that the, the challenge charts for the um, 20th anniversary songs were finally released. Um, kind of been floating around there for a little while. Yeah, I think we've all already seen them. <laughs> or maybe not all of us, not all but of us, some but... of us have already, see, already seen them. But now they're official. Yeah. Uh, so the, it's the grand finale event. So I think that they're sort of wrapping up sort of like the eight, tw- the 20th anniversary like event, it seems like, um, with this grand finale event where you play uh, songs and, and you build up your, uh, as opposed to the Golden League thing where it uses your EX score, this uses your machine score. And so, you, you know, to unlock one song, you have to get, like, 10 million machine score. Um, you, For our memories. Yeah, so first you unlock our memories, and then... Uh, challenge. Yeah, it's our, our memories challenge, which is, like, an 11. Yep. And it uses a bunch of uh, notes or, like, patterns from other DDR songs. I think they're all 2MB songs, right? Oh, mm-hmm. is it? Yeah. It's cute. That's cute. Really cute. Um, and then after that is Show Me Your Moves, which is a very fun 14. Uh, some cool sort of crossover patterns. Yeah, it's there. really fun. Um, and then there's Chaos Terror Tech, which boy, do people some, have some opinions about this chart? They do, and like to be honest, it's it. I think it marks a kind of a new sort of level in like what Konami is doing with these hard charts. It seems like the the level of tech in, involved in that, which I, I guess it it makes sense with the name of the song. But the, the it is it is some terrifying it a, tech. It is crazy. a terror amount of tech. Yeah, so it, it actually uses a different BPM skeleton than um than the expert chart. Right. Um, so that means it's like stopping and starting at different times than the other ones. Yeah. So I mean, we first saw this with Ace for Aces, where they use different sort of BPM skeletons. But yeah, this kind of takes it to an entirely different level. Um, there's just tons more stops thrown in there. Um, it's it's and. Very tricky patterns. A lot of crossovers. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that 30 million machine score, which you get after doing 10 million, then 20 million, then 30 million. Then you get 40 million. Uh, you unlock possession, which is an 18. Which... Which is really... It's a really hard 18. Yeah. It has uh, shock arrows. Um, a lot of them. A lot of them. Just and, a lot. Like a lot of a lot. Maybe like the narrowest shock arrow window. Uh, maybe other than... You know, it's probably faster than Ishtar, huh? It has, yeah. it has an eighth note jack, uh, up arrow jack, like five notes in a row with a shock arrow in and between. 380, and right? 380 in between yeah. each one of them at the, like... It's pretty hard. Um, I, they kind of went out on a limb on that one. Yeah. It's pretty hard. Well, actually, it's during the stops. It's the stops, right? Yeah, that, 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 so yeah, it's yeah. quarter notes. Quarter notes, yeah. But yeah. still. Um, so so that would be 190 Yeah, I mean, notes, it's still pretty fast. Which is... Actually, it's... But it's slower than... Because Ishtar is 16th notes at one something, 150. Yeah, and, like, a, right? another phase is uh, 160. 60, 50? So it may, not quite as bad. But I think the fact that it's, like, jacks during a stop... Jacks like, make with, it really with, hard. With the stops, like... You have to lift your foot. It's yeah. It's annoying as hell. It's certainly... Uh, yeah, it, gotta be possessed it, it, to do it. Yeah, it's an interesting pattern, and even the rest of the chart is just like wild. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's a very difficult eighteen, I think. So then, once you go from zero to forty million machine score and get that, which by the way you can augment by, or I guess I should say catalyze by, like playing DDR selection mode, which are like the different UI themes. Um, and, 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 and also the, the, the 20th anniversary songs. And also the 20th anniversary songs, yeah, also, in addition to DDR selection. Uh, and then the uh, fact that you just play Versus gets you, like, the two scores get added together for both players. Yeah. So um, but you... 100 million, 100 million, which is, like, a lot of playing. This is just so much DDR. Like, I don't know how people did it in one day. Yeah, every, everyone it's I saw insane. did it in one day. What I, are they doing? I've gone twice, and I still haven't done it, so I don't know. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. But um, it's Max360-19 challenge. 
And that chart <laughs> is, it just doesn't stop. It's got a thousand notes. One thousand combos. Yeah, for the I first time. I can't count any more combos. A thousand notes. And people are already getting insane scores on it. Bro, Sony, the first day, he was getting like, what did he get, like eight, 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 eight grades eight on grades it? Eight grades on it, yeah. Just insane. Still no crossovers, though. No crossovers, but it has those 24th note bursts. Yeah. <laughs> and, and some uh, 16ths at the end. Well, yeah, so they're they're 12th notes technically, but at 360. Um, so, yeah, they're basically 24ths. And then, yeah, at the end, there's 16ths, which are like 30 seconds. 30 oh, seconds. Notes, which are like. <laughs> At, like, le- at least it's slower. what I would write back in 2006. At least it's slower than egoism, <laughs> I guess. Like they're, they're, not, they're not quite as bad as yeah, egoism. it's kind of like egoism junior. Yeah, I think that it's still very hard, and I think it's it's a different kind of challenge than most of the other 19s, mm-hmm. where with Max 360, you know, it's it's mostly a stamina test. It's not can you execute this impossible pattern like the most of the other ones are. Like Valkyrie Dimension. Like over the period. Or OTP. Yeah. Where you just like, you kind of can't do it. <laughs> yeah. <it's just> like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Max 360, I, it, I, most of it's relatively straightforward as far as as far as far the 19s go. Yeah. Uh, but just keeping the level of energy required to actually try for 1,000 notes on the gold cab. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> right now, especially. It's just... Very difficult to do that. I feel like, yeah, I totally agree. I feel like with the with Max 360, you approach it by like taking a deep breath, and then for all the other ones, you're like Charlie from It's Always Sunny, like with that giant <laughs> board of like trying to figure out like, okay, I, I gotta play this on 1.5 sudden plus left at this point at air a combo 200. I have to treat these jumps as 12th notes to get perfects and greats, and like on and on. And on. Yeah. So it's just it, like, it's like yeah. a puzzle to solve, where, right. whereas Max 360 like, is just like, just <laughs> fucking do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Like, just take that deep breath and yeah. go. You get the, the ITG uh, stamina scream. Yeah, when when people ah! when, when, when people play stamina charts and you know you're like eight minutes into like a 240 BPM song and you're like into the you're just like ah! yeah, <laughs> just like, you're in pain. Just like great. hype yourself great. up. Yeah, it's Max 360. That's you know basically one reason. Yeah. I think it's I think it's good. I think we needed another song like that. And egoism, even though it's like people have always said that was like the easiest 19. It's the only one that's been pfc by chris but it even egoism in the middle of egoism you have the slowdown which is like for most players very difficult to do mm-hmm. and, tricky rhythms too and the, the, the rhythms ri- and the the steps like you kind of you have to double step a lot of it whereas like max 360 it's not really the case but still you know yeah. it's just a it's stamina test for sure very interesting uh, not the hardest 19 Probably the easiest 19. Still a 19. Yeah. <laughs> De- definitely still. TLDR. This is still a 19, I think. Uh, it, it is a segue into the 19s, I think. Um, but I still definitely a 19. Just by pure note count and stamina alone. I, yeah. Looking forward to playing it whenever I manage to unlock it. So, so there's also been a bunch of other... Songs, songs. dropping. Yeah, so... Um, there's a new Golden League song, which was announced, uh, and actually kind of why why we got our guest later in the show, uh, Akira Complex. It's oh, a new, I just got that. A, a new song. Yeah, we, we timed it just right. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's called The World Ends Now. Um, it's a 16, really cool step chart, 200 BPM. Yeah, um, it feels like a, like a faster, like the chart feels like a faster version of like Anniversary. Or uh, you know something like that, where the like the patterns aren't particularly difficult, mm-hmm. but because it's 200 BPM and there's a lot of 16th notes, it's it's like a, a stamina test, and I think it'd be really fun to to ma. Yeah, there's a couple like little 12th note sections in there that are pretty spicy. With some crossovers. Yeah, which you could probably double step, maybe. Ooh, that's pretty maybe. fast. Uh, what what else is 12th at? At two hundred. At two hundred. I mean, Idol is like what one ninety. It's uh, uh the seventeen. Idol is like two oh one. Revolution. Or something like that. Oh yeah, two oh one. Yeah, I guess you're right. End of revolution. Yeah, end of revolution. Uh, I mean, like I have a hard enough time like double stepping the twelfth okay, and like maybe you in, can't. in like Astro Gazer. It's really fast. Yeah. I don't. Know, I think it'd be easier to just do the crossovers. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to give it a try. Um. So yeah, that's a pretty sick track. And then. There's a bunch of news. We haven't even had the chance to watch them all because all these songs are dropping like right now, basically. Yeah. That this new event just started um, today. 
today as we're recording this. Um, it's like a, it's the Bimani, it's like a voting contest. Uh, it's in Japanese, I can't read it. Um, the I Ichika Bimani Voting Roundoff 2019. Um, so what it seems like, not sure if this is 100% the case, but it seems like each of the different Bimani games has sort of a theme song representing it. Um, and then they're, they're all crossed over into the other games. Um, and so there's like eight new songs in DDR with like lots of pretty, I think eight. We watched about like five or six of them at least. Um, all the charts so far look really good. Mm -hmm. um, and hard. And hard. There's yeah. a new Technorch song. That's, Which, yeah, it's 8882. It's basically 888. Um, 88. 16, 16, 16. <laughs> that's, well, it, no, it's just, oh yeah, right? <laughs> Um, so that one's a 17. It's a hard 17, though, I think. Like, it's almost as hard as 888, I would say. It's pretty, it's pretty hard. Um, and another Akira Complex song, uh, Black Jackal, which is, uh, from, uh, sort of representing Dance Rush, um, Stardom, uh, crossed over into... And that chart looks so good. The song, as well. song is amazing. Yeah. Um, which you, you'll hear about that a little bit more later on. Um... There's that new Taka song. What was it? It's like a 16. Uh, uh, Tr Trill off, Trill G. off G. Trill yeah. off G. Uh, lots of drills in that one. Looks fun. Um, so yeah, lots of new content. Really excited. For Ace2O. For Ace2O, unfortunately. Um, and hopefully that'll come out here soon, eventually. We don't know when. Yeah, we're all crossing our fingers. The One thing that people noted was that the... Uh, like on the website, like the version, it they didn't specify out like which areas are getting it. It just says like all like star, all, like some all, kind of wild card. Yeah, like all areas basically. So like people kind of speculated that that means a twenty may be coming to white cabs in the U.S., but it doesn't seem to be the case quite yet. Um, I think that they'll make an announcement about it. Hopefully, I hope. Uh... But either way, like when it does drop. There are so many songs we get to play. Yeah. I'm really excited. The Just the fact that the music keeps getting better. The yeah. charts keep getting better. That's so cool. The game actually keeps getting better. And yeah, it's just it's going kind of our way. Yeah. So part of that, uh, this event, is there's like a voting aspect to it too. Um, totally don't understand that quite yet. But like as you play, you can get like tickets and then like use those to vote. On, on, on game like, features on, and like, stuff? On, like, your favorite song or whatever, and then, like, the different games can, like, unlock things based on by how many votes. And so, like, the final thing that they said if DDR gets a million... Points or whatever. Points or... I, I don't know how many points... That's That can't be individual votes, but that they'll work on introducing edit mode? That would be insane. I, I mean, I, I have a lot of feelings about that, Yeah, but it would... Definitely cause a big a big ruckus. I think people would I agree. people in, would in a good flip way or... out in a good way. Yeah, I think you know everyone would start making charts. I, I assume that it, if they did something like that, like edit mode, it would probably tie into their new mobile. DDR Ultimate mobile game that that they their so Tokyo Game Show is also going on right now, and there's also news about that stuff coming out. Mm -hmm. So there's like a a new mobile version of DDR to and the 2DX and Sound Voltex coming out. We don't know the complete details yet, but it looks like iOS and Android. And uh, that's pretty crazy, yeah. basically. So the, I, I I think I could see them introducing edit mode into that. Of yeah. like, but So you'd have to like make step charts on your phone, which would... So we all do everything on our phones anyway. Yeah, yeah. it'd be interesting. Um, <clears throat> and, I, you know, I don't expect that it'll have the full song list. So... You won't be able to make charts for like every song, um, you know, that's in arcade ace. Like they'll, it'll probably have an, a limited song list, I would guess, for the mobile version. Yeah. Sort of like, um, what's the, the Sound Voltex home version thing? Yeah. What's it called? In Infinity. Infinity? In, no, that's Infinita. that's that's two no. DX. That's two DX. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Two DX. Sound Voltex something something. I can't remember what it is. Yeah. Um, but from what I understand, those kind of have like limited song lists too. So I, I imagine it would be kind of like the the same case with the mobile. But we'll see. Yeah, there's I, actual news. So 
you know, next time we'll talk about it. Lot, lots of new stuff. Yeah, hopefully we'll, you know, this will be solidified a little bit more by then. Um, and the, the Dance Rush crossover event is still going on. Um, I still haven't unlocked Crazy Shuffle because I haven't played Dance Rush in a while. But uh, I mean, our nearest round one doesn't have Dance Rush, so that's sucks. true. I was like, "Where is Dance Rush at?" At sucks. Hayward, and I'm like, "I can't even think of where it is. It's yeah, not there." They don't have it. Yeah. They should get it. Yeah, I want to play Dance Rush. It's amazing to play on. <laughs> it sure is. Um, yeah. So lots of new content. Pretty excited about it. Um, it's good. And hopefully they'll keep pumping stuff out as you know a twenty continues. Hopefully it's not all just tied to you know this this launch event. So. Hopefully we get to we'll get to play it. Yeah, on, be the best. for on, real on white on white cabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is kind of the annoying thing about playing on gold cabs is that like the limited speed mods is pretty annoying. Yeah, and only round one. Only round has one has them. it. Yeah, certainly, and like no extra stage, and yeah. So there's 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 a there's a lot of downsides. Yeah, I mean, but it, it's... but we have it, which is the one upside. Yeah, it's still <laughs> I've still been enjoying it. I've been playing a fair amount of. Uh, fair amount of gold cab mm-hmm. played the uh new era um to the doubles chart for it is very fun yeah it sounds great um yeah i mean i l- love the singles and the other day i was like i wonder what the double chart for this is like turns out it's really good the patterning is very fun it's pretty much the same rhythms as the singles um but yeah it's really good um a lot of good stuff yeah um, so do we want to throw it over to our interview with Akira Complex? I think so. I'm down. Please enjoy. So today on the Aero Panel, we have a special guest, Akira Complex, who is known for his new song out on DDR Ace 2 The World Ends Now, among other hits that he's had in a bunch of other Bimani games like Beat Mania 2DX, the the song Break Stasis. I think that was the first one that you had in 2DX, right? Yeah, that was. And that was uh, hot. a few other songs too. And uh, <laughs> can, can you list them all off? <laughs> or well, for, uh, first, just like give us, just give us your, a quick introduction. Yeah, tell us. Some... What, 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 what me? I wish we had an air horn. <laughs> we should we should have the air horn app. We definitely need some kind of like. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to the uh, Aero Panel, oh, man. man. Oh hi, yeah. Thanks for having me. I don't I don't know how to like introduce myself. Um. I'm a care complex. I make music on computer. <laughs> um, I don't like computers, but I use it. Yeah, they're very bad. Uh, <laughs> this sounds like one of our friends, I gotta say. Uh, oh, hell yeah. He's in the room. Uh, um, yeah, so I, I make music for uh, like Dance Dance Revolution, Dance Rush Stardom. Uh, there's like a couple other games, like Groove Coaster, Archaea. I've done stuff for like Trigger Inc. and stuff. Uh, I'm signed to Course K's label, STTB Recording, um, and yeah, and I work with Attack the Music a lot. I suck at introductions. Holy shit! Uh, <laughs> I think you're doing great. I don't know. Yeah. So, how did you kind of get uh, like what was your like initial exposure exposure to music games? Like, what, did you like play when you were a kid? You played DDR and stuff, or or, or... yeah, yeah. I, I played um, I played DDR when I was a kid. Uh, we had uh, one of them on Xbox. I think it was Ultramix yep. or something. It, it, it was it was the one that had. Uh, I remember specifically because I like begged my parents to buy me the um, like the Outer Limits like DLC oh. extra songs or whatever. Awesome! Yeah. I love um, Outer Limits. That's yeah, such a oh, good it's song. So good. Oh my god. But yeah, so I just started playing it as a kid. Um, kind of just enjoyed doing that. Uh, wanted to, you know, make music for those games and. Is that now is I'm that like, like stuff. something that you actually had in mind? Like, well, here's okay. Actually, okay, lore. Okay, uh, so <laughs> initially, I was like using RPG Maker to like <laughs> when I was like ten years old or something. Uh, uh, so my dad had already taught me like MIDI sequencing and all that other stuff. Uh, so that's good parenting. At that point, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, he, he like let me use like a um. He has a DX100 and a DX7. So I like learned FM synthesis, like a very basic stuff, and mostly just like tweaking patches that are already there. But um, yeah, that was mostly my dad. But like initially, I just wanted to make my own video games because I'm like, I'm smart. I'm ten years old. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> but like, you know, I I have no money and I can't hire anyone for like sound or music. Uh, so I just ended up um, trying to make music for that stuff and then just dropping 
like actually making games entirely because I had way too much fun, uh, you know, trying to just make crappy bootlegs of DDR songs. That's so awesome. Yeah. Did you, um, just by chance, like, did you also go through any formal music training? Because it sounds like it was basically just your dad and experimentation, like, and you just... Could... Yeah, that, that, that's basically it. Yeah, wow. none, really. Um, like, even now, um, when it comes to music theory, sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, but it sounds good. You know, if it's hitting, though. <laughs> I mean, yeah. um, you can't, you can't um, deny. I think that's... Yeah. That's really all you need. Yeah. yeah. Ro- yeah, exactly. Roger keeps trying to get me to do music production. He'd be, you, like, you can totally he'd do be it. like, you'd be great you at can it. Totally do and I was it. like, I know nothing about music. You don't need you to know. You just it. need computer. I was yeah. like, you just what need is computer. key? <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, no, you should. Absolutely. I encourage like anyone. Yeah, I mean, it's super a, fun. Really, FL Studio, just go download it. Go download anything that's no, free. No. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, so, what, what uh, software do you use? Uh, right now, currently, uh, like, what do I use mostly? Yeah. Uh, Ableton Live 10 right now is so kick-ass that I can really do pretty much anything in it, I feel like, at this point. So, um, I haven't really needed to use, like, other software. Nice. Ableton's great. It's, uh, the, the audio warping features really, you, you can't, you can't go wrong. Yeah. And now you can like group groups and group those groups. And, uh, <laughs> it's so, uh, it goes hard. I so, so I gotta ask on the, on this note of Ableton, like when you collaborate yes. with ama- another amazing artist like Homarju, are you, are you all just like passing Ableton on a laptop back and forth and like throwing ideas on the, on the board? Or is it like, are you like digitally collaborating? Like, how does collaboration work on songs like Break Stasis? Okay, it's actually kind of weird. Uh, I I rarely have used actual project files with collaborations. For the most part, it's like stem based workflow. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody will create a track, and then the other person will like uh, either finish it or like you'll get it to like uh, fifty or sixty percent done or something, and then you just uh, leave them little bits to where they can go ham on it. Um, that yeah, that, super fun. Pretty, yeah, yeah. So uh, you just like bounce out everything. It doesn't really matter what DAW you use. Uh, you can pretty much collaborate with everyone as long as you know you bounce out audio and MIDI. And it's also it's also just a good habit to get into, like stemming out all your stuff. So for someone who's listening to this and has no idea what stemming out means, um, oh. how how would you how would you describe that in like layman's terms? Okay, so uh, stemming out like a project would be say if you have like seventy layers or something uh, in a song and you want someone to remix it, then uh, you would just send like the the exported audio for each channel. Like in Ableton, there's a way to do it in batch, and in most DAWs, I think there is. Uh, but yeah, so they can just work with the audio because it gets kind of messy if you're trying to. Um, you know, pass over project files to where there's a, a million different plugin differences between the two of you, mm-hmm. uh, or, or sample locations and the samples aren't like finding properly. Yeah, if you use two different OSs like Windows and Mac or something. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's it's a nightmare. It's, it's yeah. a lot of like sending like a f- Illustrator file that has like linked files to it or something, and it's like, yeah. oh, now yeah. or like, oh, I'm missing the fonts that you use. Now I can't do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just like missing like very very crucial resources in it. Yeah, that'll happen all the time. So, um, stem based workflow is like really uh, reliable and um, kind of just the easiest way to go about it. That's I think working with audio is, is something that pretty much everyone should get used to. Yeah, I mean, I tell people the same thing about graphic design because uh, that's kind of mm-hmm. my background is like Photoshop and stuff. So I just tell people, yeah, just like mess around in it. But That's all you got to do. Yeah. You just to poke, learn anything. You just poke that's around. That's all you got to do. That's all life is, man. Yeah. yeah. Just mess around. Um, so uh, we got uh, quite a few questions, but I think a good sort of segue into that would be to just like... W- how did you initially like even get your music into like Bamani games? Like, were you previously signed to Course K's like record label, like before that, okay. or c- kind of your, your whole trajectory into like getting to where you are now? It's kind of weird. Uh, it's kind of weird, but like really wholesome, I think. So, um, basically, I, I would just make a bunch of shitty music and just like upload it on Facebook. I added like all my favorite Bimani artists because I was just like this obnoxious little gremlin fan who's like, mm, okay, I'll add them project. Mm. So, uh, so I did that. And uh, I think uh, one day M project actually like clicked one of my links and liked uh, something. So 
uh, after that, uh, he had asked me to do like a couple of remixes for stuff. I did like a remix for Shimamura and a remix for Sharpnel and M Project, um, just like on uh, just little CDs in Japan. Uh, and then from there, after I, I guess doing a couple of releases for him, then um, Kosuke approached me to remix for him and Ryu on S2TV. Wow. Uh, so. That's uh, not a bad he, pair yeah. to be reached out <laughs> by. Like, yeah. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah. No. It was. It was crazy because I'm like, oh my god. Because <laughs> I I had Kosuke and Ryu added, but I I would have never. You know, my little teenage brain would have never imagined like incoming message from like Kosuke. I'm like, mm! <laughs> so of course, it was fucking awesome. So like, like so exploded. How how old were you when you started like, I guess I guess like really making music you would like you would consider like when you started uploading stuff to facebook or whatever uh oh man i have no idea uh, uh, whenever oh man that's uh, i would have to like go back it might have been like 2009 or something yeah like 2009 or 2010 i think it was that's kind of a long time ago yeah, you must have yeah. been pretty young that, that's early yeah. early facebook well not Baby early mode. facebook days but yeah it's not yeah. Uh so um yeah and then uh, after after the release with uh Kosuke and Ryu then he's like, "Oh yeah, what's your label credits?" I'm like, "What? <laughs> I don't have any." Uh so he um he was like, "Yeah, why don't why don't you just like be a part of S2TV? It's just me and Hamarju." Uh I'm like, "Okay. Ain't nothing. I I'm I'm down. I'm just like this like weird teenager who's just like I don't even know how I got in contact with these super cool people. That's amazing. Um, so yeah. who, who all else, else is on S2 or ST, S2 TV? What is it? ST TV. Uh, yeah, uh, ST TV. Uh, it's, um, uh, it's just me, Kosuke, and Homarju, like in terms of actually signed oh, yeah. uh, people. Uh, I mean, the, the record label isn't active anymore, but um, yeah, uh, that that was kind of really what led to the Konami stuff is uh, doing stuff through SGTV. So basically what you're saying is make stuff and spam it to everyone. Mm -hmm. Yes, make stuff. And, no, no, don't don't spam it to everyone. Just like make stuff, upload it, like talk to cool people, uh, you know, share your ideas with people. Don't don't worry about like don't worry about like being cringy or anything like that. That shit's so stupid. Like yeah. if anyone tells you what you're doing is cringy like. The, I, I saw a good, a good quote on Twitter recently, uh, and it was it was part of a tweet, and it said, "Cringe is anyone who's more alive than you are." So, yeah, basically. And it, I mean, I, I I look at it as kind of like an unrefined idea. I mean, usually uh, when people are like, "Oh, that's so cringy," it's like they're they're looking at something that's just some vomited concept that someone puts out there. Uh, but then with refinements, then all of a sudden it's cool. Yeah, uh, exactly. So the base idea is always going to be like cringy. I just made like a song about like the end of the world. I was thinking about explosions and shit. <laughs> uh, but you know, if you put it in a cool way, yeah. it will always be cool. <laughs> I mean, so yeah, that was basically the question that we had from uh, Ash Astral, who um, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they also mm -hmm. a, a music producer says um, mm -hmm. you've accomplished a lot of Bimani al aligned artist streams. Uh, what advice? can you give for musicians who want to pursue, pursue an opportunity like this? Um, I would say definitely uh, to talk to people who are enthusiastic about rhythm games, if that's what you're talking about specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, talk to people who are enthusiastic about rhythm games. Uh, meet some friends like that. Uh, make music with people who are interested in that sort of thing too. Because if you kind of look at how things are going with rhythm games, the people who are really... Um, like who are really pushing for a change in that and who are kind of innovating our previous fans themselves, just like generation after generation. Uh, so you want to be a part of that and like, you can be a part of that. Yeah. Uh, Cause you know, you see a lot of artists who are fans who are just like coming in. It's, it's a thing like you can do it. It's like, so you, Absolutely. you just said you're just talking about innovation and what, what that means is doing something different than the, what people were doing before. So what inspired you about this kind of music and what was it that you thought that you wanted t to change in the music that you made? Um, hmm. Let me think about that. Uh, I think what I liked about the music in DDR was that it's so unapologetically itself. 
uh, you know, sometimes it's really cheesy. Sometimes it's really um, like hardcore and just like, uh, I, I don't know how to put this. Oh God, <laughs> I'm like, my brain is fried. Uh, okay, so sometimes the music in Dance Dance Revolution is really all over the place. Um, and sometimes it's taking influence, just kind of shamelessly taking influences from all these other places. So I kind of wanted to apply that to myself and to my music and try and be as like genuine as possible uh, and just make things that are um, kind of as unrefined as possible. Um, do, do, like, do you Do you make sort of music with like... If you're making music for a music game, do you think of like how the chart might be? I don't like I don't know how oh, yeah. how okay. much of a player you are like these days, but like do you kind of imagine like oh like you know putting this kind of crossovers. Yeah, like like putting this kind of rhythm in here would be really fun to like actually play as a pattern. Yeah, so uh basically how I've been able to do that because I really didn't have access to rhythm games when I was younger, so I would have to like listen to OSTs online. Uh so I'm kind of having to do a similar thing now since I don't really have access to an arcade, um, and nor do I have like time, uh, <laughs> where I'm just having to talk to other players and get their feedback and their experiences and find out what they like about certain charts and certain songs. And um, it's given me a much clearer image of stuff. I mean, I still do like play Sound Voltex, and that really helped. But for the most part, it's just talking to, to other players and like competitive players too. It's like, what do you want? Like, what challenges you? What makes your brain just go on fire? Like, I want to know. There's a lot of 16th note rhythms. Yeah. I'd say well, that's, no, that's the I, yeah. So, I mean, specifically, like, about your new song, uh, The World Ends Now. Yes. Um, When I first watched the chart for it, it just came out. So, we're recording this on Wednesday, which it came out, like, today, basically. Like, yes. it dropped in, in America, like, this morning. Mm. Um, When I first watched the, the video for it, I was, like the sections with the 12th notes in there are like we call them 12th notes oh, yeah. you might know them as triplets triplets like <laughs> oh wow yeah <laughs> those yeah like uh, at least like watching the chart i was just like oh man that section is so pop like it's so yeah. good um I, I haven't i don't think any of us have had a chance to play it yet but no i'll play it soon yeah i, yeah. I was like grinding last night uh on the gold cab to like reach the the gold level so that i could unlock it yeah, I, I, I don't think I could ever play it, like, ever. I'm, I'm, I'm really not great at rhythm games, uh, so I would like to watch my friends play it. Uh, it's also funny to see uh, just how good people are, because here I was thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to release this this super cool song. It's super fast. It's, like, heavy, and that people are going to have a hard time with this, and then it's, like, within two seconds, there's, like, a PFC video or something. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Everyone's um, really good. That's the yeah. thing about dance games nowadays. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome, though. That's 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 crazy. Brandon, I was curious, going back to something you said earlier, like, what is the deal with the genre of music that's both in DDR and, like, the kind of music that, you know, artists like yourself and Aran and, like, you and uh homarju like what is it what is it called and and why is it why is it so the same and also so different do you you know what i mean uh, like there's are, 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 are you talking about oh man are you, are you talking about like the specifically the 200 bpm stuff uh, not or exactly like like, like, think, about, think about your break stasis album right like i feel yeah. like all five of those songs are like super different mm. would you agree yes so like are they all the same genre uh, <laughs> I mean, no. Um, They're not, right? It, no, it, just, it's but, dance game music genre. Yeah, right, but there's like, yeah. I feel like they all belong to like one major, like, would you call that major group like JEDM? Like, is that like I would the, say, uh, the major I, I, genre that they all bubble up into? Use, I don't want to use that term because not to roast you, but that sounds sounds a little lame. Oh yeah, so. uh, absolutely. I I don't like I don't like the term. I'm like I'm like yeah, trying no, to I'm trying to think about like how I would classify. I would just it. say like game music because yeah. that's like the yeah. easiest to explain. Yeah. Because even if there's even if there's all these um little tracks that like cross over into other things and whatever, it's still just easiest to be like, hey, yeah, that's that's dance game music. 
I honestly that's why it sounds like that. I mean, that's, that, that's kind of why it's yeah. kind of how we describe it too. Yeah, I think yeah. Yeah. at, at a certain DX point, music. like the genre <laughs> is like genres fake, right? Yeah, at some point, oh, yeah. of course. And you, if you're making something, you kind of don't want it to cleanly fit into mm-hmm. a genre. Yeah, which is yeah. which is why 2DX just has like ridiculous genre names now. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. I think it's more just like. Um, like as someone like I like a lot of different types of music and I just I love music in general um mm. and like I grew up playing piano and violin so like I have a different lens I think and like mm. I think that what like music game artists like the ones I've mentioned are doing is incredible and I feel like it's super understated and underrated because mm. and like I I like at the same time wish it was more mainstream but I'm also glad it's not mainstream yeah um which is like also kind of the beauty of it you know what i mean because it's just like yeah it doesn't fit in any genres but it's also like it also it, it's all like crazy cool electronic music mm. i don't know it's just like it's wild it's an it's an enigma is the point it, it is really cool <laughs> I, I i bet it was i bet it was really cool like coming from that background and then hearing like dj taka or something oh or so Nekomata much master so much yeah, yeah like v for, for the sure. first time dude like when i played like i don't know was that fifth style i think uh beat mania fifth style oh my god yeah just like Hell yeah. yeah. So good. So that kind of leads us into a question here from at uh, jcas614 or 641 on Twitter. It says, uh, who are your Bimani musical inspirations? Ah, oh, I mean, always in terms of the most important, like forever will always be the holy trinity of Kosuke, <laughs> uh, LED, and Soda Fujimori. Good choices. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty. Always. <laughs> Uh, but especially, um, especially Kosuke and LED, and I mean, there's other people melodically who really influenced me, um, like especially Nekamata Master. Uh, but it's really mostly the energy that that made me want to, you know, uh, make music that was like that too. So hearing, um, especially the tracks off of uh, 2DX Troopers, like hearing Steel Needle and Icarus, yeah. just set my brain on fire. That's such a good OST. Icarus is very yeah, good. It's, li- it's actually the best one. Like, for me, it is Troopers, Empress, Distorted. So many oh good songs. God. Dirty of Loudness is, like, one yeah, of the Dirty best of songs. Loudness. Dirty of Loudness is so That's good. That was, song. like... Go Beyond from Distorted. Go Beyond. Distorted. Go Distorted. Beyond. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, hell like, yeah. actually, the 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 little... uh For my track in Archaea, there's, like, a part where um where the notes go between, like, standard 16ths or, or 8ths or something. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's 8th notes. Uh, and then they just shuffle up. But I actually took that idea, like, that same concept was inspired by um that one part in Go Beyond where it does the same exact thing. It's just in reverse order. Yeah, that's awesome. That's super yeah. sick. Nice bit of trivia there. Yeah, Lori. <laughs> What's what are your like future plans with this stuff? Do you like is is your goal to continue to make like video game music? Uh do you want to to have like a more mainstream kind of uh project at any point or anything like that? I mean, uh it, in terms of uh what I'm doing right now is is focusing primarily on game music and I'm I kind of want to be like that for a while, but one thing that I want to do is I really want to branch out in the types of games that I've done like uh, that I I'm doing. There you go. Uh <laughs> Yeah, uh, so uh, right now, for example, like I'm doing a track for a racing game, but really that's the only track that is outside of the rhythm game scope of things that I've done in a while. Uh, so doing something that's like an entire RPG soundtrack that I compose myself would be sounds, incredible. That yeah, sounds dude. so fun. Go back to the roots. Yeah, I want to make like a whole OST. That's that's my goal. It's awesome. Do you, uh, like, have you like remixed any like video game music stuff? Oh God! Uh, I mean, I I have, but that doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> uh, and that was like a while ago. I used to like try and remix Castlevania tracks, nice and stuff. Yeah. I mean, hey, uh, B- Bloody Tears is in, uh, like two DX and, and DDR. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. What? It is. Yeah. What about Camellia's Undertale uh, remix? Yeah. Cam- oh, I love that. Cam- like- Camellia's. What do you like, think of Camellia? Yeah, yeah, yeah honestly. That's a good topic. What do I think of? What do I think of Camellia? <laughs> <laughs> I love Camellia so much. Camellia is like one of my best friends. Just, I love just an amazing internet presence. It's amazing so good. internet presence, like 
his understanding of memes has just transcended <laughs> anything to the point to where it's like bleeding over into his actual music. Like, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you heard, and I think it's under construction. Uh, he has like the do 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 like <laughs> as like a little part from um, Megalovania, the, the little the Megalovania uh, sample, but it's an actual release. It's really cool. Like the, yeah, the fact that he doesn't take himself that seriously, but he's mm-hmm. still extremely badass is something that I I just always yeah. want to. I, I think it's kind of like. how he's built a lot of his fan base, like outside of like you know his music that is in music games. Yeah. Um, that you know, by doing a lot of these like sort of meme tracks and stuff, it it yeah. it, it, it like expands your audience. You know, it yeah, gets it really more people does. to listen. It's, yeah. a good, it's a good marketing move, I think. Such a rare Definitely. quality too to not take yourself seriously. I know. So it's just like it's uh, just refreshing, that. super refreshing. Yeah. And he's just a bad like great music. So. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But yeah, like I think it's cool to hear about kind of that holy trinity like you said like roger asked you like who inspires you Mm -hmm. today who are you like really looking forward to working with that you haven't yet uh like do you want to work with one of those artists i i absolutely do i would love to make a song with led uh i'd be so sick i've not uh i've i've hung out with him he's great but i have i don't think i mean uh i'm not gonna say i'm not at that point yet but I mean, he's also he's like you know one of my heroes. So I'm like, oh you god. You both got songs in the song list. You're right there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I would love to work with Led. That'd be awesome. Ugh. Yeah. Make like a spiritual sequel to Steel Needle. Do you get a lot so of uh, like response, like fan response from the Japanese community? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like uh, when I, both when I'm over there and online. Um, and it's really sweet because I, I haven't been over there in like a year and a half, uh, but I will have fans of my stuff and fans of, of Rhythm Games just actively participating with me in internet antics and whatnot. Uh, just no matter what, they stay really interested and really dedicated and really passionate and really sweet and supportive. So it's a, it's just globally, a, it's a I good realize community. people are. Yeah, the, I, I think the, the great thing about music games is that like everyone I meet, through music games they they're all very unique people and yeah, for sure in order to have like a niche hobby like this you you got to be a little strange and yeah, exactly it's for weirdos and that's like that's good like it's so good um and it just helps you connect with people you know you you have like this niche hobby and it just makes it so much easier to to talk to someone because you have all this stuff in your brain that they have in their brain and yeah. You're listening to TAP, the Aero yeah. Panel, a dance game podcast <laughs> with guest Akira Complex. Yeah, you, you should. <laughs> everybody, We're a bunch a, of weirdos. Everybody listening to this is probably a weirdo. That's true, yeah. <laughs> um, so are, are there any like classic like uh, DDR songs or, or just music game songs that you would, you know, would want to remix? Oh, God. Can I just like list off a whole bunch of them? Go for it. <sighs> okay, I already remixed Icarus officially, but I want to re-remix it because I feel like I can do so much better. <laughs> I want to do a uh, Steel Needle. I want to do Bitter Chocolate Striker. Oh, I love Deep those Striker ones. for sure. I- I've played Bitter Chocolate Striker out so much. That thing, ah, that, that goes so hard. It's so good. Um, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Go Beyond for sure. But I mean, I I don't know what I would do with it, but I would do something cool with it. So I'm like, whatever. Uh, what else? Ah, uh, I mean Max three hundred. B for well, uh, well, I uh, will no. Actually, no, not really. Uh, even though Max three hundred is super iconic, I, I I wasn't um a fan of the song itself. I was more so the kid who would just constantly be playing B for you over and over and throwing quarters into it. Nice. Like, I was that kid. I would pay top dollar for B for you Akira Complex remix. Hell yeah! I would love to do that. Somebody just needs to hire me to make Eurobeat in general. Uh. Damn. I would love to do it. I'm down. Uh, I have a virus. Please hire me. <laughs> it's one of the all-time. Make it really cool. Greatest genres of all time. That's actually yes. the, the please hire me bit is also. <laughs> I know. I know it's actually real. It's not really a bit, but also uh, maybe a little bit of a bit. Um, it's a it's a good thing to bring up. Like, how can folks listening to this who really like you uh, support you online? Like like how how can people get more of your music how can people pay you for your stuff uh so i i have stuff on bandcamp through attack music um that's 
that's pretty much it for right now. Awesome. Uh, I I kind of want to get together um, some merch stuff, and also I wanted to start maybe planning another CD or something. When I just get more into physical media stuff, since I haven't done that in a while, uh, like since Break Stasis. So, uh, but yeah, for right now, my stuff is on Spotify and it's on Bandcamp and it's on SoundCloud.com slash Akira dash Complex and. Yeah. What about YouTube? Uh, you got you got stuff on YouTube? Other people upload my stuff on <laughs> YouTube. So it's like, I don't even have a chance to. Uh, and I feel like I don't want to be that person to where it's like someone just uploads something and then it gets like a bunch of views. Then I'll just be like that little person who's like kind of upset about it and then quietly uploads my own one that gets like a hundred views. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> suffer. <laughs> uh, copyright strike. <laughs> but I mean, like, I'm, I'm a, like personally uh i'm i'm fine with uh stuff like that or like sampling or people downloading my music i'm like fine with stuff like that for the most part uh like i have like a pretty loose stance on it because i know like people can't always afford like my stuff um but at the same time like support you at shows you you were just here in san francisco a couple months ago that's true yeah oh yeah you can support (laughs) you can support me at shows i play shows sometimes and it's sick you just played one in boston right oh yeah i did yeah i played yes (laughs) oh the uh hot hot summer Uh, nights or whatever yeah yeah yeah, shakanatsu uh i i played like a a pre a pre-party thing though it was like a just a fun little thing that i came out for nice Do, do you try and work like music game music into your sets like that do, oh yeah depend, definitely. depends on the audience or uh, well i mean the the audience for the shows that i get booked for are mostly bimani fans so um it's it's never really an issue mm-hmm. and i feel like the stuff that i make also kind of bridges the gap between like ddr stuff and edm stuff kind of so i end up using my own tracks as a way to stitch like 2dx music uh, with something like if I want to play a silent track or an upbeats track, um, I feel like it, it's a good middle ground. So that's that's kind of how I approach sets. Mm-hmm. Do you do you have any inspiration, like artist inspirations outside of like music games? Uh, I, I mean, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, which 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 types of inf- uh, inspirations? I I mean, just like yeah, anything. Any any artists that you know you listen to that you know, I guess are not Bamani music that, you, uh, you know, kind of influences you or, or just kind of inspires you. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of that. Uh, so when it comes to composition wise, uh, I, I don't want to like butcher his name because, <laughs> because he just like, he, he made a bunch of my favorite OSTs, but, uh, Motoi Sakuraba, I think is his name, but he makes, uh, the soundtracks for Star Ocean and Valkyrie Profile, stuff like that. Uh, he also did Dark Souls, but it sounds completely different hmm. uh, than his other stuff. But um, kind of how he approaches leads really influenced my music a lot. Uh, just having a bunch of crazy synth leads that uh, just kind of just don't really go anywhere. They just like just go up and then they go down and uh, just blend with the other elements. Um, his compositions uh, like just made mine way more crazy. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. It's more chaotic. It makes sense, but I can't say that I that that is what I think about when I think Dark Souls. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. Okay, so Dark Souls is the opposite. Dark Souls is like okay, that makes sense. And then that pull, pull, pull. But like, his, <laughs> like, <laughs> but I mean, his his other stuff. Uh, his other stuff is really energetic, and there's a lot of like electric organs and uh, Moog synths and stuff like that. Awesome. It, it's it's really really cool. You should check it out for sure. Yeah. Um, um any yeah anybody else sir uh hideyuki fukasawa also was really really good um he did the stuff for chaos legion on playstation 2 and i think he also did onimusha cool um yeah also the just the soundtracks for a lot of uh konami games really inspired me zone of the enders castlevania gradius um yeah, the old school Konami sound is really kind of it's timeless. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's great. It's so good, it's so underrated. Cool. Um, and you you also just had a song release in um Dance Rush as well. Yes, yes, I did. Black Jackal. You want to yeah tell us a little bit about that? Uh, so Black Jackal. Yeah, I I did that for Dance Rush, and it just got ported to Nostalgia. Um, 
Yeah, that was so fun. Uh, I, I guess that was also drawing from kind of the same inspiration of like steel needle like the same kind of universe that stuff creates i'm like i want to make something like that like i played hella Oh and, <laughs> and stuff like that i'm just thinking about old konami um just stuff like uh, like even anubis from uh zone of the enders uh was really the visual aid for that track um uh, have, have you guys played that at all Mm-mm. no I, 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 i've never uh, played I, i've seen some stuff i i know wow. the, char- the character of a new, or like the it's like the mech That's thing so from it's from really some of good. the enders i watched a, i watched a friend play the whole game yeah. so i feel like that kind of counts i mean that that counts if you know who anubis is yeah, yeah but anubis is killer uh so just the idea of like a mechanical robot that has like weapons or something um a mechanical robot what the hell mechanical dog <laughs> robot there you go <laughs> Um, <laughs> those mechanical robots. <laughs> yeah, that was like that was like the visual theme uh, for the track. Cool. So, do you like do you make the track first and kind of like pitch it to uh, you know Konami, or do they say, "Hey, we want us you know you you to do a song for uh, you know Dance Rush," and so you kind of like have Dance Rush in mind when you're making it, or? Yeah, I mean, they they approached me. That I, I did a Black Jackal and the World Ends Now uh, pretty close together. Uh, they were just like, hey, you want to do a track for DDR? I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> and then, like, a couple weeks passed, and it's like, do you want to do another one? <laughs> another track by Konami? I'm like, yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's usually how that works out. It seems but, like there, there, there's something seems to be happening internally, and I, maybe you can't comment too much on this, but it seems like they're branching out a lot these days and trying to hire uh, kind of like a w- much wider diversity of people. Mm-hmm. And it's it's making the soundtracks to these games just a, a lot more interesting, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I think that kind of ties into uh, to what I was saying before about uh, rhythm games kind of determining uh, rhythm game fans deter- determining the future of rhythm games. Um, I think it kind of goes back into that because I think uh, different companies are realizing that there's talent everywhere and there's fans of this kind of thing everywhere who all interpret things uh, in their own way. You know, they'll, they'll take this and then they'll just digest it creatively different with their own influences from their own home country or their own uh, stuff that they grew up on. And I think they're realizing that they can get um, a very specific sound, uh, you know, like ma- maintain uh like a rhythm game type of sound or something uh while adding new influences to it i think it's uh kind of one of the best things that you can do as a game is just let your fans be a part of it i think that's like what's contributed to that the most well said yeah definitely agree with you there (laughs) do you have any more questions from the audience um yeah were there any on twitter i saw you liking people's tweets there Oh, yeah, um, I was like, I was liking wow. people's tweets. Yeah, wow, oh, what, what's the what's the knife thing? Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so um, you just call it knife. <laughs> sick. Uh, so basically, at Hyper Night, um, it, we like through this show of uh, Hyper Night. It was really really cool. But um, in the BMB, it was uh, me, Tanuki, Soccer Burst, Park, uh, Zavi. Who else? It's like a bunch of people, uh, and we were all just staying in a and b together, and we would just get into shenanigans every single day and watch a bunch of Eric Andre. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it was, it's it was crazy. really sick and make a bunch of music, but at a certain point, I just got like way too chaotic, and I was just like chasing people around for, with like the knives from the B&B, and there's like videos of me chasing people around, and like, <laughs> it's like going ape shit. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the whole knives thing. So now it's just kind of become part of my identity kind of <laughs> from all that experience there's like there's a there's a video of me like making everyone sing happy birthday with a cake that i bought them but it's not anyone's birthday <laughs> and i'm like jumping on the couch with knives it's sick <laughs> so i mean that yeah that was for the hyper night show here i mean do you usually like hang out and like stay with like these other artists and stuff like when you play shows together like or if you're in japan or whatever like you guys just hang out chill i mean yeah uh it, it's kind of that way i i end up show, uh playing a lot of shows with a lot of like really good friends of mine and we end up splitting bmbs or um you know staying in hotels together it, it's good because it lets you uh, kind of bond with 
creative people and bond with your friends a little bit better in you know just like uh, we were all these music people but we were playing smash and watching eric andre it lets you like bond outside of music too uh so yeah just like get bnbs with your friends and hang out and do cool when you were here in the bay area was there was there any particular experience that you know you'll, you'll you'll remember for a while or what did you what did you like about being here in san francisco uh <laughs> there's a dude uh i <laughs> i went to like a gas station this was like my first day there and there was like this guy who was just like really crazy and he threw a bag of chips at me <laughs> and, like i was i was like trying to buy some that's it? Doritos. What kind of like, chips? that's it <laughs> I, I i have he like threw it at me and i was like with my friends i, I don't know what type of chips or whatever but uh yeah, no, it's just like this crazy guy, and he's like, "Get the fuck away from me!" I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm just trying to buy some chips." And then, meanwhile, outside, like Ethan, uh, the guy who arranged Hyper Night, he's just like hanging out in there with me. And then, someone's getting their bike stolen outside too. <laughs> I'm like, there we go. Okay, that's, that's awesome. more like it. That's, that's more sick. like that. that sounds like San yes. Francisco. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so sick. Uh, but no. Um, yeah. I don't know. Just kind of, just kind of everything. Uh, I just love hanging out with my friends over there. Uh, I don't really do much. Like I don't really go anywhere. <laughs> you think I do anything? Hell no. Um, I mean, what does anyone do? Yeah, but, they're always in a, in a house. Or... Yeah. At least you're making good music. Oh, thank you. That's very, very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you're listening to this outside of California, Cali sucks. Don't come. Uh, There's already well, too I, many I'm, people. I'm, I'm, the rent is too damn high. Exactly. Yo, I gotta I mean, ask. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I, I was I was gonna say I'm I'm actually moving there, but not like to uh, to uh, to SF. Oh. But well, well, yeah, so. welcome. You're welcome. We'll, we'll see you when you sucks. get here. You're you're yeah, welcome. It no, I'm it saying does that's not suck. It's no. actually good. I want other people to not come because it's crap. Like Dalton said, that's the that's the meme. The rent the meme is, is too high. The meme is okay, we don't want more people because it's already crowded and it's hey, the best state. But more cool people, people is, is fine. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna ask you just like I I've been playing 2DX for like a million years and I'm uh, yes. not competitively just because I love the game. Um, I gotta ask every 2DX fan. What's your opinion on Slake? I love Slake. Slake is good. Why yeah. is, is is there like is there like a does anyone have a negative opinion on I, Slake? I think I think it, I think it, people, it can be polarizing. People who especially don't play 2DX, I yeah. think they have negative opinions of Slake. Yeah. But it doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Remember Mint? Mint was on the same Mint's really good. On the same yeah. uh, mix as as uh, Go Beyond. Hell yeah. Is the yeah. the cube? Is that no, that's the, DJ Swan. That's DJ, DJ Swan. 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 That's right. Uh, no, um, Slake was dunk, dunk twenty two. Twenty two dunk. Twenty two dunk. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's good. Yeah, Slake's amazing. Slake's Slake's good. Yeah, cool. Slake, just checking. <laughs> just checking. Checking check check your cred, dude. <laughs> that, yeah, <Right>? check. <laughs> you, you, you're yeah. Omid approved by like by uh, liking I'm Slake. Done. Looking at the interview now. So th- I mean, I just want to say thanks for talking to us. We're n- we're not necessarily going to end it yet, but we really appreciate you taking the time to sure. you know to speak with Thank us on, on the podcast. I, I and I think the you know the music game players really want to hear more about you know your experience as as an artist and you know how you got to where you are. And like obviously, you said a lot on the show tonight, but mm-hmm. I feel like you know if you if you have any thoughts that might inspire people you know feel free to tweet it out or something i think people would respond very positively to it i think just knowing that it's possible to you know become a part of the things that you like is a very inspiring thing yeah especially as you stress multiple times that that is what's happening and that's what you think is happening and that you know we should have it happen more yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like certain like it sounds like collaboration is like a big part of it. It's like kind of getting involved with like these other artists. Like that's kind of how you make the connections, right? I mean, definitely. Even even with the whole uh, cross genre stuff, it it really only took. Um, I think it only took like a couple of people collaborating with like Japanese artists to, for for people to realize that hey, you can, you know, have. Uh, music like actually good rhythm game music from outside of japan or that are collaborations with japanese artists you get what i'm saying uh i think yeah collaboration just leads to good things in general yeah i, I mean uh, i think everyone always gets hype when there's like a new collaboration in ddr or whatever like two artists oh, yeah. that like you maybe didn't like expect to like 
do something together or just two yeah. artists that you really, really like. You're like, oh, man, I can't wait to hear what it sounds like together. Really, yeah. any, any collaboration with Soda, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm yeah, always hyped sure. about. Like Cyber uh, True Color? The... Cyber True Color was really good. Yeah. It's such a good song. Hell good. Yeah. Awesome. Do we got anything else? Um, uh, I, 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 we, we, we generally covered most, yeah. most of the questions. I feel like it was so scatterbrained, though, like, oh, shit. Hey, my brain. Honestly, if you, if you listen to our past episodes, that's th- this is a lot more on topic than yeah, our... Normally, we spend, like, oh, yeah. 45 minutes talking about Taco Bell. And, <laughs> oh, um... it's fucking sick. Yeah, what, what, what's, your, what's your Taco Bell order? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, what's my Taco Bell order? I would, I would order, like, two of the Doritos List tacos, the, the the cheddar ones and then probably crunch wrap supreme hell yeah and then those little cinnamon f- fuckers <laughs> those, th- <laughs> <laughs> those things <laughs> whatever they are called that's the official the, name uh, the cinnamon twist the cinnamon fuckers <laughs> and a big old baja blast <laughs> uh gonna, yeah, gonna yeah. drink it out of a cauldron what yeah what else do we talk about energy drinks what what are your opinions on uh energy drinks they suck like yeah. that shit's so bad for you. Oh. <laughs> like I used to drink that all the time. Please don't. Uh, if you have anxiety, don't. Okay. Try and limit, limit, limit your you, caffeine intake. Have you been by reading as much my Twitter as feed? <laughs> you know, no, but uh, I mean, you're smart if you're like thinking. Yeah, like, I, the same thing. I literally tweeted the other day. I was like, I really need to stop drinking energy drinks because it's like peaking my anxiety. Am I, yeah. I what if you want to be anxious all the time? Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> sign me up. In. Yeah, I, I might <clears throat> switch to like tea. That sounds yeah. better than uh, yeah. Earl Grey tea is like my go-to now, but I still don't drink it every day because I, I realize that the less and less I have it, the less I need it. Um, yeah, stop. Stop. That's very Stop healthy of you. Drinks. <laughs> I mean, only now, like I'm the least un- I'm the least healthy person of all time. I'll be on like a nocturnal schedule and eat like three Jimmy Dean breakfast bowls and chug a fucking thing of, of <laughs> but no Dew energy Red. drinks. <laughs> but no energy drinks. Absolutely not. I would never. <laughs> Mount Mountain Dew is the peak of caffeine. A cure complex would never, <laughs> would never drink an energy drink. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think that is wise advice though um yeah as hard as as it is to admit i, th- yeah. I think, yeah, I think it's, get, it's getting so older important. uh yeah. kind of realize like oh this is making me feel terrible <laughs> yeah i i used to i used to eat all this like terrible terrible shit for you like i would eat so much candy and now i like eat a piece of candy and i'm like i think i'm going to die <laughs> how did i do this <laughs> I, yeah i was That's like not good i was like working from home the other day and drank an entire like the, the 300 milligram um like rock star and then i just like sat on my couch and answered emails for like four hours i was just like losing my mind i was like, oh, yeah, I was, like not even like moving I was just like, why did I do this? Just vibrating in and out of the ether. <laughs> Bas- <Hell> yeah. <laughs> basically, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you also uh, you made our our track for Infinity Stage, our Infinity Stage trailer. Yes, yes, I did. Thank you so much for that. Thank yeah, God. I I hope you guys had a good time at Infinity Stage. Sorry, I couldn't go. Yeah, it was very successful. I th- I think the fact that you know you contributed the the track. I think it really kind of elevated the production value and kind of made us seem a lot more legit than we actually were. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Like I, I tried to, you know, keep that as high, high quality production <laughs> as possible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds but, like something straight out of dance rush. Like, yeah, no, I, I was using, admittedly, I was using a uh, Kosuke's uh, dance rush track as like a huge inspiration. Cause I mean, it's first of all, it's sick. Uh, second of all, that's just like, perfect uh, for yeah, the whole exactly. thing yeah so i thought you were gonna say fun. second of all it's sick it's, uh, <laughs> first of I mean, all it's sick second of all it's sick <laughs> i mean it, it seemed like everyone liked it too uh but yeah. It, yeah. i mean if you guys want me to extend it or something then just like let me know hit me up on twitter or something because like i don't know how in demand you guys uh, a, a full uh F- we'll see what happens a, for the next one. A full version for yeah. it, yeah. For next know, year, maybe yeah. maybe I'll oh, yeah. uh, do a remix. I, maybe I'll drop it in as the the intro and outro for this episode. Spe- oh, yeah. Special no, normally <laughs> normally oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nor- normally we use it an Ash Astral track, but we can mm-hmm. uh, we maybe we could switch it up for this special edition episode. Sounds oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. 
Um, you have anything else to to uh, comment on? Add any um, wise do, 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 words do, 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 of advice? Wise words of advice. Uh, don't eat too many Jimmy Dean breakfast bowls. <laughs> Uh, but also just just keep making music because also okay another thing that i want to cover uh i see so many especially like younger musicians or people who really want to get into this stuff they'll make really really cool works and progresses and they'll just make a bunch of work in progresses uh and upload them you gotta stop doing that (laughs) i love you so i'm gonna tell you this you have to stop doing that because then you'll start relying on other people's criticism and then you'll finish less music because uh, you'll be like, oh, I need to touch this up so so it sounds good when I show off this work in progress. Just finish songs, please. That's the best thing you can do like, for yourself. Just finish songs. Did you get that, Roger? Yeah, I'm listening. Possible. I'm listening. <laughs> yes, Roger. Yes, finish songs. You got this. I believe in you. I, I, I'm lucky to have enough to have heard some of Roger's music, even though he doesn't post it publicly. Yeah, I, I, I try not to, to send it to anyone because I'm. Uh... It's it, good. It's good. Manage. It's good. Post it more, Roger. Come on. Mm-hmm. So, sure. uh, again, thanks for joining. Uh, I think we'll probably end it now, and, and unless you have anything else to say. Um... <laughs> so, uh, so why don't you just like give us a, a rundown of like all your your newest hottest tracks in in music games and and you know anything else you got. Okay, so uh, newest stuff that is like what I'm doing, what's out now, stuff like that. I have a new track, Black Jackal, on Dance Rest Stardom, and it also got uh, uh, rearranged by B Manny Sound Team for uh, Nostalgia. I release uh, The World Ends Now on Dance Dance Revolution, and I'm working on a racing game track now, which is actually done. I posted like a clip of it, but I can't like post anything more about the game detail and i'm also doing like a kind of like a j-pop track with uh the the vocalists on the world ends now and she also did uh the vocal sample for break stasis and for reality distortion she did the uh the voice acting that? that stuff that's uh melancholia break stasis <laughs> yeah she's sick she's so, so she's good. awesome but, yeah yeah so uh, on October 20th, she's releasing a new EP, and I'm producing a track on that. Sweet. Nice. Looking Hell forward yeah. to it. Yeah. And then how can people find you on uh, social media? Okay. Uh, they can find me on Twitter, Akira Complex on Twitter, uh, SoundCloud, uh, soundcloud.com uh, forward slash Akira dash complex. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much where to find my stuff. Uh Hit up my DMs. Tell me how much you like the songs. Uh, post a bunch of videos of your playthroughs. I love seeing that all the time. That like that keeps me cheered up, actually. Um, oh, I have to check so... out the double chart. Actually, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, it's crazy! It's so <laughs> sick. Oh my gosh, I, I would never like be able to do that. But seeing other people doing that, um, and I, I I saw so many. Uh, like posts of people who were just continuously doing the song over and over trying to like get uh get certain notes right and stuff i thought that was so cool um yeah we're all kind of like that <laughs> yeah that's so obsessive. cool <laughs> i mean i i get like that with uh this doesn't mean i'm good but i get like that with like competitive fps stuff <laughs> but that's pretty much it um i'll just be like oh what can i do better and i i i like that i really really like that i just kind of wish i was good at rhythm games too takes a hell of a lot of time yeah it, it's it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a huge way. time sink. I, the, uh, I think i think making music for music games is a better time investment than uh playing music games <laughs> i don't know okay i mean okay it, it, for me personally yes because i can i i am perfectly satisfied with talking to people who are very very good at games um like to play the games for me basically and just like give me feedback i'm perfectly content with that i love just making music will always be my passion even uh, more so over playing games awesome um well thank you for joining us yeah thank you for having me i appreciate it so thanks again to akira complex for joining us this week it's uh i think it's a really kind of a rare thing to get access to a bimani artist and actually talk to someone who knows what's going on inside uh inside the beast and he's like super nice and funny which is just like great we need more people like him who are not only doing awesome stuff but are also like welcoming so yeah big big ups and thanks for contributing some of your time yeah follow him on twitter um so we there's lots of events going on right now in the dance game community 
Um, and a bunch just happen. And a bunch just happened too. There's always, there's so many events going on all the time. Um, but coming up starting September 14th is going to be a, a new uh, Valkyrie Dimension um, series, uh, the, the Fall 2019 Remote Tournament. That's uh, the women's DDRA series. Um, so keep an eye on their Facebook page and their Twitter for more information about that. Um, there's also Project Idola 2.0, which is another remote tournament um, starting. September 16th through uh, November 10th, and that's run by Dr. D of YouTube fame. Yeah, he's really good. And uh, the the last Project Idola tournament was, I think it was pretty popular. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Chris got some good scores in that. Yeah, it was one of the first, it was like the first like ace like online tournament sort of like remote tournament yeah. thing. Um, Three years ago. It was, oh, man, Three I can't, years? I can't believe it's been out that long even. Three it's years wild. ago. Um, there's also the Game Underground Arcade Championship 4, GUAC. Uh, good acronym. Um, that's, we love our GUAC here in Cali. Yeah, that's in uh, Waltham, <laughs> Massachusetts um, at Game Underground. That's October 4th through the 6th. Uh, so if you're in that area, check it out. Um, there is also going to be Feel the Beat at Round 1, uh, Silver City Galleria. And that's October 25th and 26th in... Um, Taunton? Taunton. Taunton, Massachusetts. <laughs> um, the home of MA, you, yeah. you may say. Uh, and then there was just a tournament announced for in Michigan, Michigan's first ace tournament. It's the Premier Southeast Michigan Open, PSMO. Good name for a tournament. Nice. Uh, so that will be November 23rd um, at Round 1 Great Lakes Crossing in uh, Auburn Hills, Michigan. I might go to that. Yeah? Just because. Yeah. Why yeah, why not? not? There's so many events. We should go to as many as we can. I am going to Raj. Raj of I am no, Raj no longer of the too. garage. Uh, and that's December 13th through 15th in Columbus. I feel like we're going to meet a lot of new people there. I'm really excited. Uh, shout outs to you if that's your first big event. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, Come I, and hang. I was in Wisconsin a couple weeks ago, actually, and, and got to meet some... Uh, some people um, that I hadn't got to meet before. Nice. Some fans of the show and, and, and saw some people at like ITG players that I hadn't seen in like eight years or something. Sweet. Just kind nice. of wild. So nice. yeah, I'll, I'll need to go back there for, for a tournament sometime. Um, this is rich. Yeah. And then also the big deal for, this is a ways out, but they already announced it getting ahead of the curve. Big deal for Dallas evolved. Good job ripping off our, <laughs> Our name there, guys. <laughs> that, that, who ripped off who? That, that we totally came up with all by ourselves and didn't rip off from anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that will be March 27th uh, through 29th, uh, 2020. So you, you, got, you guys said the tagline, dude. Um, at Round 1 Grapevine, Grapevine <laughs> Mills Mall, or whatever it is. Uh Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's uh, Pray for Y'all. Pray for Y'all. <laughs> y'all. Um, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, so that's going to be another big tournament in Grapevine, Texas. And I'm sure we'll talk about that every show until then. Yeah. Pretty much, so you have no excuse to not go. <laughs> um, cool, well yeah, lots of events going on. We want to hit up our, our set of the week here. Um, yeah. Which like... You don't even have to play it as a set, to be honest. These are just kind of like our song recommendations. Or what we've been playing lately. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just kind of, you know, songs that people aren't really thinking about a lot, maybe. Or maybe you are. In, yeah. in the case of my suggestion, which is uh, Chaos Terror Tech Mix. Nice. It's really fun. Yeah. It's really fun. I've tried it so many times. One grade every time. Yeah, like. me too. I, <laughs> I, I played it like eight times the other night. On the, I was playing the, on, on the Gold Cab to get my points up um and yeah flagged it just like in the last 50 steps like four times yeah. like come on um it's very easy to choke there but you know it's a reason to play it again yeah and i think it's a very fun chart there's lots of yeah techniques and stuff it makes you feel cool because you can do it yeah there there was like a few people like watching me play like right towards the end where it has like the jump stops and then like all the crazy stops at the end i was like yeah <laughs> That's what it's all about. Yeah, even though people are probably very confused. Like, random people walking by are like, why are the arrows not moving? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wonder how that, like, appears to people, or if it even registers, of, of like, 
the song is stopping. I don't know. I'm... In my experience, usually people just say like, "Oh, he memorized it." Like, yeah, like that oh, it just you... fuel it fuels the like, "Oh, you're just memorizing it." It's like, yeah, sure. It's like, yeah, I, yeah memorizing. I totally memorize it. The, the rhythms, but not the patterns. In my case, anyway, um, and not even the rhythms. Sometimes, <laughs> still forget where the stops are a lot. Um, how about you guys? What what song do you want to recommend this week? I'm going to say Max Unlimited, and I know that's like a, a song that is uh, very well known, but I don't think we've recommended Max Unlimited so far. Uh, check it out. It's a 16 on Expert, <laughs> and uh, I think it's a 13 on, on Difficult. 13 chart's pretty good, actually. Mm. It's got some uh, 16th note step jumps in it, oh, baby. which is, you know, kind of kind of calls out to the Expert chart. And as I think we all know about Max Unlimited, so just... Play that. Send us your scores on Max Unlimited. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Show Me Your Moves. Ah. Uh, whatever difficulty, obviously, but I think the 14 super fun. I think the song's very nostalgic because it's like, I think there's some, does it have every mix announcer or just first mix? I forget. But it's just like. It's, yeah, it's the, it's the old announcer. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. I just, the 14 chart's really fun and really, really well designed. But I think like just in general, hearing the song makes me remember the fun of ddr and like i've been playing this game for like almost 20 years and it's just like it, it i feel that with this song i think they i don't did, know why they did kind of nail the it's like very good. the nostalgia sound of the song the even, vocals even, even yeah. though it's like you know like a lot. obviously like a newer styled song like i think it still captures that like kind of classic ddr energy plus it has that otp reference in there at the end oh like the, like, the, like, the like there's some notes at the end that yeah. are from over the period oh nice yeah um yeah, like good it. suggestions and if you are gold level in uh on golden league on on ace cabinets play the world ends now the new song from akira complex oh yeah awesome um well i think that just about wraps it up this week um our twitter handle is at sf underscore evolved and thanks to akira complex once again for joining us and thank you for listening and thank, thank you, you for playing, playing. Thank you for playing.